In this video, we're going to explore the concepts of similarity and congruency in terms of how it relates to shapes. So the first thing we're going to explore is what is meant by the term similar shapes. And so what we see here are two different triangles, and we're given a statement here that says triangle ABC squiggle triangle DEF. And the key here is that this squiggle is the symbol for saying that the two shapes are in fact similar. So similar is represented by the squiggle sign here. And, and what that basically means is this. It means that the two triangles are the exact same shape, but they are different sizes. Same shape, but different sizes. And so let's, let's take a look at what those actually mean. So the idea of them being the same shape means that the angles in both shapes are identical. So one way that we show this is by using some specific different, some specific angle markings. So for example here, angle B is a right angle triangle. And you can see that B is in the middle of the the name of the triangle. And so the, the angle that's also in the middle, in this case the E, is the angle that is the angle that has the same measure as angle B. So angle B matches up with angle E, and those are both right angle um, right angles. The next one we're going to look at is uh, is angle A. And so I'm going to use a little sort of one mark there and I can see here from looking at my name that A comes first and D comes first. So the, the matching or corresponding angle to angle A in the uh, other triangle is angle D. So I'll use the same marking there. And finally we have angle C and I'll use two lines here. Usually we don't use different colors, we use different numbers of lines and C matches up with angle F, and we can see that because, once again, if we uh, look at the names of the triangles, angle C comes last and angle F comes last. So the first thing about similarity is that they are the exact same shape, which means that all of the angles are the same measures. So if I know what angle A is, I automatically know what angle D is, and same with C and F and B and E. Now, the second part here is this idea of different sizes. And, and what this really means is that the sides uh, form a proportion. And uh, we'll take a look at, at how we can kind of do that. So the first thing we need to know is we need to know some information about the sides. And so I'm just going to make this up really quickly here. I'm going to say that uh, this triangle has sides of 3, 4, and five, and then this one here has a size of let's just say this one's um, fifteen. Remember, we're going to trust the uh, the numbers and and not what the pictures look like. So we can use this to in, in our in our proportional understanding to find the other two sides. So I'll just put in some variables for those. Really, what we're trying to do is find the value of let's say the value of n and the value of x over here. So to do this, we'll set up a proportion. And there's a bunch of different ways to do this. This one's really obvious because we can see that there is clearly a pattern between the two triangles. So we could use that of you know, 5 times 3 is 15 and then use that to find the rest. But um, let's just set this up a little tiny bit differently. What we'll say here is we'll say that um, the ratio of a B. Okay, so that's my three over here. And that matches up on the other side with D E. So what I'm really doing is I'm comparing the small triangle to the large triangle. So there's my words again from our proportional unit. And so I need to know the I need to compare it to something that I know about both of them. So I do know what AC is on the small one, and I do know what DF is on the, or on the large one. So now let's just put in some numbers here. AB is 3, DE is a mystery, AC is a 5, and uh, DF is 15. And so then again, the way I've written this is actually a pattern 
within the ratio, so times 3 times 3. So that gives me um, what sort of my scale factor. I know that this triangle here, triangle DEF, is three times uh, triangle ABC. So I can now put in some values. Uh, three times three is nine, so that's going to be nine. And uh, four times three is 12. So the key here thing, once again, is that uh, similar shapes have the same shape, meaning the angles are all the same, but the sizes are different, and they form... Uh, a proportion when you compare the ratios. The second part of this is exploring what is meant by the term congruent shapes. And so here we have a similar thing where we see triangle GHI and then we have another weird symbol, uh, triangle JKL. And once again, as you could probably guess, congruent is uh, represented by that symbol. And we saw that with angles as well. Congruency is a little bit different though, and that's why the, um, the equal sign is there. Congruency means that they have the same shape, just like they did in uh, similarity, but also have the same size. So they're the exact same shape and the exact same size. So the angles are all the same, and the length of the sides are all the same. So the first thing we're going to do here is uh, I'll put in some values for, uh, let's say I'll put in some values for uh, this uh, GHI over on the side here and then we'll, um, we'll use that to give us information about the other shape on the, uh, on the right. So let's just say this is once again a right angle triangle. Let's say this is, I don't know, 60 degrees. This is 30 degrees. And then we'll say that this is a uh, uh, four units and six units and nine units. And I'm just making those numbers up. They, they may not actually be accurate. So here's once again where the order of how the letters are written actually matters. And I'm going to use some highlighters again to kind of show that. So what we see here is that point G or vertex G on the left corresponds with J on the right. So G and J are matching up. And we can do the same thing with H and K, and we can do the same thing with I and L. So the key thing here is to pay attention to the order of the letters, not just the way that you think the pictures look. So one thing that I usually do, just to kind of help make this more clear, is I usually write the corresponding letters from one shape next to the other. So I see a J here, so I'm going to write a G, just so I know that those two actually go together, and the H over here, and the uh, I over here. So because of that now, I can actually label this image on the right using the information on the left. So I'll do my angles first of all. H is a right angle, so oh, H is over here, so there's my right angle. G is 60 degrees, so I look over here and there's the G, so I know that this is 60 degrees. Uh, I, therefore, is 30 degrees. And I do the same thing with the sides. Between G and H is 4 units, so I look for the G and H over here, and that is 4 units. And I do the same thing, H and I uh, over here, and I find the H and the I, oh, there it is, is the 6. And then the long side of the triangle is 9. And there it is, 9. So one of the key things that you're going to need to be able to do with congruent shapes is write what are known as congruency statements. And all that a congruency statement is, is, is a statement using math symbols that tell people which angles in one shape correspond to which angles in the other shape and which segments in one shape correspond to which segments in the other shape. And we've kind of already done that when we sort of took the letters from one shape and sort of superimposed or added them to the uh, to the labels for the other shape. But let's just do these congruency statements uh, all together here. So first of all, we have some congruency statements that are related to angles. And once again, there are two ways to do this. You can actually look at the shape itself, or you can look at the information that's given in the congruency statement for the, the two shapes. And so well, let's, let's do the information for the uh, angles first here. So angle G is congruent to, and now we'll look on the other shape. So over here we can see that we wrote G paired it up with J. So it is 
congruent to angle J. Angle H is congruent to, and this time we'll just look at the, uh, at the statement for the two shapes. H is the middle letter, K is the middle letter, so it is congruent to angle K, and angle I is congruent to angle L. So for angles, once again, three ways we can actually do this. You can look at the measurement, you can actually look at if the letters are superimposed, or you can look at the congruency statement for the, uh, for the two shapes to begin with. We can also write congruency statements for the different sides or the different segments that make up the shape. And this is a tiny bit trickier because now each part has to have two letters um, for, for each of the triangles. But let's, uh, let's take a look at this. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to say that segment GH, so the two letters with a line over it, is congruent to, and this is where the superimposing of the letters really helps. So I'm, I'm saying that I'm starting at G and going to H, which is the same as starting at J and going to K. And so really what I'm saying is that the length of GH over here in the shape on the left should be the same as the length of JK over here on the right, and in fact it is. The next ones I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at uh, segment GI, and that is congruent to, and so I'm starting with G and going towards I, which is the same as starting at J and going to L, so J, L. And then the final one is uh, HI, H I with the line on the top is congruent to, and I can look over here again. I'm starting at the second letter and going to the third letter, so it's the same as starting at the second letter and going to the third letter, so congruent to K L. And those are the congruency statements that you would need to be able to write for matching up the corresponding parts of two different congruent shapes.